In this part 2, we will start sculpting our character using dynamic topology sculpting. Dynamic topology sculpting allows you to uh, create geometry on the fly as Blender will generate uh, geometry as you sculpt. So it's really a free way to create whatever you need and then that will be a great support to make the retopology and current tree model our character properly. So let's get started. So let's start with uh, part two, the sculpting. So we will use a dynamic topology sculpting uh, to create our base mesh and then we will do the retopology. So I'm using a tablet to sculpt, which is way more uh, comfortable than the mouse and way more accurate as it uh, deals with uh, pressure and that's really more handy and more natural to use a tablet. Uh, to make it easier to use, the user preference encourage you to uh, enable this emulate free button mouse will uh, uh, that will allow you to with the alt key and uh, pressing on the tablet rotate alt plus shift will allow you to navigate alt plus control will allow you to zoom in okay so let's apply our mirror modifier here and let's also apply our subsurf modifier we now have a base mesh like this we will be able to use for sculpting so let's jump into sculpt mode you have here a bunch of uh, different kind of brush you won't be uh, seeing me going in this uh, palette uh, oftenly even if i change of brush you can access all those brush by pressing a shortcut like P for pinch, G for grab, shift C for uh, creasing. And also you can use uh, the numbers on your keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, etc. And shift one, two, three, four, five to get to the upper level. For the time being, we'll be using the grab brush, pressing G go to side view and we will try to give our dog a better better look better shape so i want to make this one and i want it to be as cute as possible so we will probably be aiming to something close to maybe a younger dog with a bigger head and bigger eyes which is uh, pretty classical and maybe make his limb a little shorter and his body a little shorter. So with a large uh, scale, I will move those. In the, the symmetry lock option, by default, the X mirror is enabled, allowing you to work only on one side of your uh, mesh. And we will check how we can prepare this so first thing is to get this shape so we have a, a pretty square nose here So I think 
this base shape will be okay to start dynamic topology sculpting. So we're going to DIN topo, enable DIN topo, and what we see is that all the faces are triangulated. So I prefer to use the constant detail. Relative detail work this way is that you select the detail level and the more you zoom in, the thinner the detail will be. I don't like this way of sculpting. I prefer to have a constant detail level. So I switch to constant detail here. And if you use the, the eyedrop here, you can see the level of detail on your mesh. So we will start at value of 18, for example, and we will use uh, subdivide collapse, not subdivide edge. That will uh, create more and more detail and for the time being it's not necessary. So now with the brush number three here, we'll start to refine the proportions of our dog. So a good way to sculpt is to try to follow uh, the muscle flow. And you will see that it will really help you to get the right proportion and a good feeling about uh, your character. So if I sculpt this this way, it will be harder for me to get the, the right shape than if I follow this shape like this and also here like this that will be way easier for me to sculpt this way so let's start like this i will reduce a little the detail the smallest it is the thinner are your detail so we will probably make a muscle that will be uh, too big for the time being but it will be uh, smoothened by the, the retopology and also when we'll get further in uh, the sculpting. So some part will be time-lapsed. So it's just a matter of adding mat material like this, adding clay, following uh, the movement of the body and pressing shift to smooth it. So if I crease here pressing control, holding control, it will be subtracting material instead of adding material, clay, sorry. So the back here, let's prepare a root for our tail. Here there will be the scapula which is not on the back of the dog, it's here like this. But you have muscle here that get upward. I don't know all the muscle name, especially in English, especially for the dogs. Here I need to revise this part, orientation, it's more like this, so we have this going this way and then this way and then 
then all. So with the grab brush, pressing G, I move the material the way it should be. And let's have a look, those parts, those joints, sorry, are higher than the breast, so I reduce the breast, make it lower and make those parts higher. Now we will use the <coughs> snake hook brush to extrude our tail. So I don't make it too long and too large because it would be kind of problematic to rig if we have something like this. This is riggable, this is not really a problem, but I don't think it's really a pinning and also those dogs are oftenly with a cut tail, so adding a two long one, we'll keep it this size, I think. Don't want it to have a cat tail. So I just inflate it with the brush and then when, then when I smooth it, it is deflating. So just try to to reach what I want. Okay, that's fine for me. So we have our base mesh now here. We will now work on the head of our character. When you are in object mode and you get back in sculpt mode, the dynamic topology is uh, disabled. So you can work on your shape if you want like this. And it won't uh, generate uh, additional geometry. So that's a good way of refining and uh, without making your computer to go crazy. For the time being, we are, we, are, we are at a very low level of detail, so this is not really a problem, but when you start to get more into details, uh, jumping back to dynamic and jumping off is uh, a good way to optimize your computer performances. So we will now uh, refine the head. Control D to get back into dynamic topology mode. So we need this part here to be a little bigger. So I don't like the this arrow shape that much. We try to make it a little bigger, a little rounder, so that our character will look uh, more cute. So let's add the jaw like this, prepare a space here for the nose. And here I brush it like for the, the front lip and then get back here for the jaw, smooth it. Add a little more nose. Then we have this shape here that is pretty uh, soft and the eyes here. So just make this curve shape here, pressing control, digging a hole for the high bolts. Smoothing it like this. And we see that 
there is here a muscle in this part that is probably a jaw muscle but it's way back compared to a human being so let's do it like this and here we don't have the proeminent cheekbones as for human certainly have this kind of muscle here to allow him to move his upper lip then here it's pretty soft like this okay let's extrude the heels so that we have a references for the size of our head, so I just create a base shape here, adding multiple strokes, smooth it, make the back of the skull round, and then with the snake hook, we will extrude the hair. this way and this is where having a look to the references will be important so I have one I think yeah this one so it gets larger here thinner here with a smooth curve and really pointy here while here it's pretty straight so with the smooth brush, I can get this straight form, like this. And there is a little hook here. But you can see it take, taking shape slowly. So I get back in object mode, click here on the surface so that the 3D cursor snap the surface, add a UV sphere, scale it. I will apply the scale, control A, scale. In edit mode, we will rotate it the front by 90 degrees and we will then select those three loops so I just select the center point control plus two time to increase the selection control minus two decrease and we will just select, I'm sorry, those two points and move them inward and also this one inward and here add a loop, control B to bevel it and increase the number of segments to 3 to 2, sorry, but it creates 3 cuts we will smooth this and we will apply a mirror modifier to this so we add the mirror modifier and we will use our dog as the origin point so it's the cube and it's a good time to rename it i will call it jr like jack russell sculpt and as soon as we have those two big eyes it looks already cute so i think i like the size of them let's check how it looks if it looks weird like this yeah too straight like this i think it's great 
now we can sculpt around it so i select the dog go back into sculpt mode Control d to enable the topo and i will get to nine person for the detail and we will start detailing a little bit the face so again here my global proportion may not be right but with the grab brush we'll be able to move everything in place if we're not happy with this so you can see that this part is really uh, really big and then there is kind of nothing to separate uh, the eyelids so this is not right here this is more this way but you have to be cautious adding more material here because he will look more hanger hungry sorry so just make it as smooth as possible we'll add the material here Freeze a little the inside of the eyes here. To get so I, I'm freezing and softening it a lot of time. It's fine and now add some clay here. Create the beginning of the eyelid, and here there should be some material. show you something about what you want to say about your character if it's an old dog you should or something uh, you know very heavy etc this part should be lowered and also this part and you will lose dynamism you see like it looks like it's heavier on its uh, fit and not as dynamic as before so control the I will disable dynamic topology if you make the shoulder higher and pointing more to the front he looks stronger and more uh, I don't know how to say it but um, he has a more military shape like this so this is not what we want 
and if we make the back higher it will be better for a female character for example it will look more uh, feminine more sexy in a way <laughs> if we can say it like this so I, I do it extremely but you can see that it really changed um, the behavior of our character if I do it like this more like a cat more proud etc okay so this is a thing you should set at the very beginning of the sculpture yeah, I just want to revise the proportion. So let's decrease the de detail level here to make thinner detail and let's start giving it a nose shape so it's pretty flat on the top I will slightly reduce the strength of my Shift C to switch to the crease brush. Crease this part. Free to get back to my crate brush. Smooth it. Try to keep him without too much expression because if you sculpt it uh, smiling, if I do a smile already like this, okay, you, you will be happy with the sculpt, but that will be a problem when it comes to rigging. So we try to keep it. As unexpressive as possible. So I'm checking the back of the hair because there is a, a, a bug that happens often here. I will create this bug. It's this one. When you have this problem of uh, thickness here. And when you add material on the side, it is removed on the other. So to avoid this, you can use the inflate brush and uh, draw a little on your on your character and it removes the problem. So here the hairs are really really thin.
We can see that here is the son of our dog here. So it's on slightly on the outside of the leg seems or on the inside it, it's pretty hard to tell but we'll make it from the middle here and pointing pointing inward. So let's just add it here. Just make a rough shape of it. Then we can see that we have here our tendon, a small crease here, and here, and this little bulby shape. Now we will define the four fingers. drop shape here like this and we will add the clothes later on
matches are over. My chances 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 are over. shape so we'll exit sculpt mode we will add here our uh, 3d cursor just clicking on the surface shift a we'll add we'll try with a curve in the first time and maybe a simple uv sphere i think a curve would be easier so Bezier curve here. We'll go into edit mode. Isolate it, pressing slash on the numpad. To make it straighten, we will scale, select all the points like this and scale them on the Y axis and press zero on the numpad. It means that all the points here have a zero uh, position difference on the y-axis. We will exit isolation mode, pressing again the slash key, scale it, rotate it on the z-axis by minus 90 degree, switch to side view, bring it here, scale everything down and create our claw shape. So these are pretty short claw like this. And then we will give them a depth here in this curve option. The fill mode we will use full depth we will increase it like this so in my case 0 0.4 should be okay we will increase the resolution of our curve which means that here it's a square shape and we will add some kind of loop cut around so we will add a resolution of 2 which will be enough and now if I select this point press Alt S and scale it down it will decrease the depth of this point only and now we can just rotate it to give it better shape 
Alt S here, I will increase the size. And for the orientation, I think it should be slightly offset on the x-axis like this and rotate it. Now I can get out of edit mode pressing tab, shift D to duplicate it, rotate it from this point of view, move it here, rotate it again, Alt S, uh, S sorry, to scale it a little, and rotate it again, check if it's correctly aligned, and repeat the process. We will select all of them and convert those curves into a mesh. Alt C, mesh from curve. I don't know, okay, it works, so everything has been converted to a mesh. We select all of them and with the last selected here, we'll press Ctrl J to join them into a single mesh. Add a mirror modifier. And as a target here, as a mirror object, we we'll use our GR sculpt. Now we will refine the sculpt here. So we will create folds for each nails. But first, we need to slightly flatten those on the x-axis like this for each of them so I just um, put my mouse just upon it and press L that select linked object linked vertices sorry and S on the x-axis SX For this one, the y axis will be better. Y. It doesn't matter if the shape is not perfect because we won't keep those. These are just references for our scope. So let's get back into scope mode here. I will try to refine it without activating dynamic topology for the time being. So those areas should be flattened. So in front view, the shape will be something like this. So just flatten the folds here. And also on the top. And make a smooth transition here.
So we will just check how it looks with other uh, shaders, viewport shaders, using the matte cap here in the shader. That can really help for sculpting. So you have a bunch of stuff when doing uh, hard surface modeling, just to check. It's nice to have a, something with good reflection like this. I usually use this one, which is pretty better than the classical one to check the, the shape or characters and also it has a, a skin look you have this one which is really close to the ZBrush uh, standard shader so I will keep this one for the time being so we will now repeat this process for the back foot So we will now make an ultimate sculpt pass uh, which is kind of a polishing pass which is not necessary. We could make the retopology directly on this uh, on this model but I like to um, refine the detail uh, and stylize my character in dynamic topology to check if I'm aiming and heading to the right thing or to the thing I want at least and also uh, I will sculpt uh, probably I'm not sure of it I'm still thinking of it uh, the eyelids here uh, because you should always sculpt your character with the eyes closed even if it's way more difficult to um, to get the expression and to check if your uh, sculpting is right but uh, when we do the retopology we may consider uh, our character with eyes closed so that we can add enough geometry on the eyelids um, so that the texture won't stretch when we 
open or close the eyes. If you model the eyelids with the eyes closed, you will lack of geometry or when you will paint the texture, the texture will straight as soon as you close the eyes. So that's not really a good thing. So for this ultimate pass, we go in sculpt mode again. We enable dynamic topology, but we will switch to subdivide edge. And I will use the eye drop to check the resolution. And I will slightly increase it because in this case, Blender will subdivide every polygon here but he won't collapse them when they are getting too close or too small. So it will really increase uh, the geometry and the poly count of our character, which is uh, not really good for the performance sake of our computer. reduce our poly count we will add a decimate modifier and generally you can decrease uh, the number of polygon by half so we'll try 0.5 so it will take some time for blender to uh, calculate the decimation so if your computer is getting blank for a while just leave it alone for a moment until it's done and we can now see that our triangles uh, are now only 600,000 and I'm checking if I lost any detail not yet so I can reduce it to 0.3 
and for me it looks fine for topology like this so I will apply the decimation and now we have a decent poly count for our model that won't make uh, Blender going crazy if you enter edit mode uh, by mistake while well, if you've done it before Blender may have crashed so now we are ready to make the retopology in the next chapter <laughs>